We have a slight blemish that we have to report, which is the increase in irregular expenditure as well as the adverse audit opinion that we have received from our external auditors. The external auditors have decided to qualify Transnet's financial statements as it is specific to note 40 in our financial statements which relate to irregular expenditure. In 2017-18, our annual financial statements were qualified on the basis of the completeness of irregular expenditure reporting at that time was Annex J E. And at the time, it was primarily due to a lack of controls, identification and reporting mechanisms for irregular expenditure. The auditors have an opinion that a particular pre-qualification criteria has been, that has been utilized by Transnet is deemed irregular. Together with National Treasury, the Board of Directors, the annual general meeting with the minister, the shareholder minister and management, we continue to debate whether that is actually the case. The, that is the external audit opinion, that it is irregular. However, we are constantly and continuing to engage with National Treasury to assist us to actually play the referee and ascertain whether this indeed may be irregular. This is largely a new matter that has come in to the fore in the current financial year. It was not an issue that was raised prior to the 2018-19 financials, and therefore it has yielded in a qualification that talks to the completeness, again, of irregular expenditure. I think in the current financial year that we're referencing at this point, management undertook uh, together with the leadership from the board around implementing controls and enhancing identification and reporting of irregular expenditure. And I think it's borne out in our financial statements as the external audit have given credit to the fact that management has made a significant effort to actually improve the controls around irregular expenditure. In addition to that, I think at the last uh, briefing that we had, in January this year, as well as the financial results last year, we did make clear to South Africa at large that in the context of the phenomenon of state capture and a number of question marks around different contracts, we will go through a very detailed process to determine whether uh, there was any further irregular contracts that we needed to report on. And in this process of cleanup, one would expect and anticipate that the irregular expenditure will increase as a result of this additional scrutiny. As far as the irregular expenditure is concerned, this year we're reporting 49 billion rand. Last year was 8 billion. I think it's not a comparable number. In terms of what we report this year and what we reported last year, just as an example, if we take in the current year's numbers, you have the entire locomotive contracts all reported as irregular. They were not reported as irregular last year. They were actually reported as matters that we still needed to investigate. So the, if we look at the 49 billion, the makeup and the contracts included in the 49 billion will be fundamentally different to the, to the 8 billion reported. There would be some carryover, definitely, because if a contract was deemed irregular last year and we continued with that, You'd have the deemed irregular spend. You'll have the irregular spend this year as well, but there's not a ne there's not necessarily a very direct correlation between the two numbers. The qualified opinion that we have received from external audit is not in any way associated to IFRS standards. So there is no issue of compliance, or there's no question around compliance to IFRS and the accounting numbers. In fact, the accounting numbers from the time that we submitted it to the auditors in early July to now have not changed in any significant shape or form.